Greetings, my kingdom family. It's your brother Elijah once again coming to bring you the scriptures, the news, the joy of reading those scriptures and the news found in them. I hope you all are doing well. We have so much going on right now. It's almost inexplicable. The way that everything is converging is 100% Bible. It's 100% excitement because we see that we can stand upon these scriptures and the ones that do believe them know that their efforts are not going by the wayside. You could stand here rest assured knowing that everything that you have fought for, everything that is inside of you, built inside of you, is there for a reason, is there for a purpose. We see that the convergence of the enemy, as I stated in my in my um, podcast past and in my videos past, the enemy is not built here to stop. The enemy is built here to do a job. The enemy is built here and sent here to deceive, and he has, and he continues. As of right now, as we stand, today being December 26th, um, 19, I'm sorry, 19, 2021. I'm, I'm always thinking in the 1900s, me. So, <laughs> so we know that the enemy is converging on us. Who is he converging on? We see that the nonstop snake oils that are on the scene are now at its fourth, fifth, sixth, umpteenth boosters. So we know that the enemy needs his DNA circulating in human bodies until when? Maybe until 100% of the populace acquiesce and or gives up. Right now, as you he sit here, Everyone who has made the decisions have made them already. If you made the decision not to listen to the lies and not to be deceived, there you have it. There are others that are opposite of that. So that's that, that's that's that. We know what's on the scene. We know what's going on. We know as the serpent continues to coil around this habitation, we know that it will not stop. We know that the mark will not stop. But we do know that some flesh will be reserved and or saved until when? That is our age old question. We also know that we continuously have a job to do. You know, there was a comment in one of my comments. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for all the comments. I'd like to thank you for all the support. But this is all for us. This is all for our kingdom. This is all for us to be edifying one another. So one of the kingdom family sent a comment and it really, I was taken back by it. I was, I was surprised and you know, I had to think and mull it over. So it was in, into the tune of why is the devil trying to expurgate everybody off of YouTube? And why is everybody running in fear of him? So I had to sit back and think on that comment. And you know what? You're 100% right. Because there is a reason why we were made to flee from this platform. But for what reason? We know that YouTube is one of the biggest platforms for self-expression that we have out there. So why are all the Christians and or truthers leaving? You know, I had more than two instances where someone asked me, why are you leaving, Elijah? Why are you running over to rumble or bit shoot or what have you. Did you get a strike? I said, no. They said, what is the reason? I said, well, just to have multiple platforms in order for me to move at a moment's notice, which is fine. But what was the real reason? If we go into our scriptures, which we will right now, we'll see that in Revelation 11, we have two witnesses and we're gonna go over a little bit of the two witnesses, but we have the two anointed ones, the two witnesses that are set out to preach the gospel, but they preach it under suppression, under sackcloth. 
And this is what came into my mind. This is what's going to be the meat and potatoes of our study today. Which is to put out the gospel even under suppression. Even under the YouTube cronies. And even under those that come to us face to face to suppress the gospel. So we know that the gospel is real and it needs to be suppressed. But it's our job to put on our armor and put it out anyway. So, fact being now, we will continue on YouTube until we are physically removed and or taken off completely in which we know where we're going to go after. Okay, of course, I set up the Rumble account, so it is there. I will continue to post on YouTube until we see what happens. But what we need to understand is that the the dark forces do not have complete autonomy. We're able to still preach. We're able to still edify. We're able to still wake individuals up to the reality and the truth, which is the scriptures all along. All along, ladies and gentlemen, kingdom family. So because of that, because of the love that we should have for each other, we're going to fight this battle. And we're going to fight it on a platform that deems the scriptures malarkey. But... We know that they can't be because they're trying to suppress it. So there you have it. Okay. So I thank you for that comment. And um, it was right to the point and real. So we're going we're gonna to do that. We're going to fight this battle and we're going to fight it at all costs. Okay. Because we know that our scriptures are real, 100% accurate and 100% fact. So that is what we're going to do. Okay. So perfect. So again, we're going to go into the big boy. Okay, you know what the big boy is. Our favorite Bible dictionary, James Strong's. I'm going to go into a couple of words with you just to tighten up how to use the Strong's, okay? Because that is one of our biggest tools that we're going to be using uh, throughout our study, okay? We have a bunch, and I mean, this, this study was so good and so flavorful, I had to just... Lick my fingers clean. You know, like when you get that nice southern fried chicken, you're not going to let the fingers go. Okay, so we're going to mm, get the flavor of our scriptures today. And this just makes me so excited. Um, we're going to go into the anatomy of the king and his kingdom. The anatomy of the king and his kingdom. We're going to go through his crowns. What are they? We're going to go through his complete head to toe analysis okay we're gonna go through the assembly we're gonna hit on the two witnesses because there's much speculation on who the two witnesses are are they two assemblies are they two individuals are they both think about this before we get there because why can't it be why shouldn't it be we know that our scriptures are multifaceted, so let's open our minds and let's absorb them. Let's be sponges today, okay? So, without further ado, we're gonna hit some prayer, we're gonna hit some study, and we're gonna hit the everlasting edification through the love of the kingdom. And we're gonna do it right now. Father, I invite you. I invite your only begotten son. I invite your Holy Spirit in order to conduct us, in order to construct this lesson for your children today, Lord. I ask you to bind any malicious intent on these scriptures, on these platforms, because we know that you reign supreme. We know that in your kingdom, in your kingdom of light, which our light will be translated into, is eternal. We know that you reign supreme. We know that you sent us our king, our shepherd, in order to guide every single one of the sheep that you have deemed worthy for your gift. And that gift resides with you in your eternal kingdom. I thank you and I bless every single individual that watches this program because it is for your glory and for your glory alone. And I do this in your only begotten son's name, Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. I love it. So, we're going to have some good study today. 
I feel it. And I want to let everyone, single one of you know that our time together is just that. I had another question about uh, the scriptures where it says, where it states, do not forsake the assembly. And this is true. Now, does the assembly mean you have to gather in a building? Not at all. We're assembling right now. Our spirits are conjoined. I'm on this side of the screen. You're on that side. Are you, are we not edifying one another? When I talk through this screen and you answer via the comments, are we not congregating? Are we not edifying? Of course we are. The assembly can never be broken. Okay, so always know that there is always going to be an assembly somewhere, somehow, because this is for the Father's kingdom, his glory, his son, his spirit, and all of us, his family. We're going to go through what the family means. All right, because some of the speculations in our scriptures sometimes I would say confuses individuals because they think that they're reading one thing but it actually alludes to something else so we're gonna go into a little bit of that today without further ado let's get into it a hundred percent now we're gonna get into the meat the real real meat you know I have a small story before we start when I was a young boot camp instructor <laughs> I always try to go into every session not letting anyone have any room to leave anything aside and that by that I mean this if I would instruct you to do something I would do it with you and I would still try to make it where I would make you continuously get better every session so every session I would kick it up a notch without you knowing of course but by the time a couple of months passed you would see that you were at an echelon that you did not start at so this is where I want all of us to be together when I go into the strongs when I go into the scriptures you could stand in front of the king on the last day and say yes I did the work Yes, I deserve this. Yes, please give me what I worked for. And this is what we all should do, okay? We still have some that have the mentality that you'll be able to sit there in judgment and blame your pastor, blame your mother, blame your father, blame your family hierarchy. You will not be able to do it. You will be judged and you alone. So, Without further ado, let's make this 100% accurate that we must all work out our own salvation and we must do it with fear and trembling, okay? But there is the beautiful side, the beautiful side where our eternity lies and our gifts are with the king, okay? Yes, good. So the anatomy of the king and his kingdom, very interesting stuff. You know, uh, when our scriptures first allude into... Jacob when he Jacob was traveling and he lighted on a place laid down and he saw the heavens open and he saw angels going to and fro but there was something very interesting in that passage and in the other passage we're going to go to in John where it states as a matter of fact let's go into it John 151 let's go ahead and crack these open we're going to break open the strongs and we're going to we're going to eat out of it today so John 151, let's go into it. Okay, book of John. Chapter 1 and verse 51. And it states, And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter you, you shall see heaven open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. How? The heavens open and angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. Remember, on our past um, video, we stated that there is a highway to the Father. There is a ladder to the Father. Who is that ladder? We talked about it. It just stated here, the Son of Man. How is it that angels, spiritual realm, ascend and descend on the son of man now 
when we're going to go into the dynamic and the anatomy of the king and his kingdom, they are both conjoined. The bride is conjoined with the husband, which is Yeshua, the Messiah. That leads us to the father. You see how the marriage terminology and or the, ma the marriage hierarchy and or dynamic is starting to build. We're going to get to it when we get down to the end of the anatomy. <clears throat> so the angels ascend and descend. So we know that our king is the doorway. We know that our king is the highway. We know that our king is the ladder in the spiritual realms. So this is going on via our knowledge through the scriptures, but not to our ocular vision. Did this ever stop from the time of Jacob? Not at all. Did this stop from the time of John? Not at all. Is it going on right now? 100%. Okay, so we're going to go through every single little bit, not every single bit, because this, our scriptures is made for us to eat, have sustenance. Okay, but that sustenance, which is today, we're going to be doing filet mignon, potatoes, Chateaubriand, okay, which is the biggest part that they used to give kings in order to eat. This is what I want all of us to be on today. All right, so we had the we had the soup, we had the potage, we had all the appetizers, we had everything, we had the 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 soup full of sustenance. Now it's time to 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 get into the the, the big part, the chunk of the scriptures. All right, so this is where we, we'll start to get more and more and more. Okay, so this is where I want every single one of us to be on the same page. Okay, because this is for every single one of us. Ascending and descending on the king. So what are we living in? Every time I try to bring these scriptures, I try to bring the dynamic of the spiritual realms because again, the spiritual realms were first. We were second. We were born into a realm we do not understand, even though every single person that you meet, every single pastor on the pulpit will tell you that they know it all or act as such. Do we? Not at all. We were born into a dynamic we don't even understand. But through the scriptures and through our prayers in the spiritual realms, we're able to gain this knowledge. It's for every single one of us. I'm just a man. I'm nobody. Okay. I just here to de deliver a message, deliver a message of fire, deliver a message. We know that messengers are angels. Angels are messengers. We need to understand that we have unseen messengers in the spiritual realms and we have seen messengers in the physical realm do you know how to deliberate between the two how do you know spiritual realms are first these are things that we must continuously ponder because they go on so we have an individual who made the dimensions and able to interact within the dimensions we know that our king came down as a man and now walks through these dimensions. Who walks with him? Do we walk with him in our spiritual bodies in that dimension? So, let's go back into it. Let's go into Psalms 18. You know that we're going we're gonna to work. I got to give you a little bit more. Every single time we come here and every single session, we're going to work harder. And at the end, this stuff right here will be the easiest navigation tool you'll ever have. Okay, so Psalms 18, let's go. Psalms 18, 9. Okay, let's see what Psalms has to tell us. Let me see here. Well, yeah, okay, Psalms 9, and it states... He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yes, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. People will read this and say, that has to be a fairy tale. But is it? Remember, I, I put out a video stated, can you see it? The angels that talk through the winds, can you hear them? Your thoughts are not all your own. 
Always remember this. So who are the ones thinking? Who are the ones talking? Are we able to receive the information that is sent out through the airwaves? I believe we can. But who made those airwaves? This is what we have to think about. Bowed. So we have there in verse 9, please circle bowed. Bowed, bowed. Okay? Now, grab your Strong's, grab your Bible apps, and we're going to go through together. So, that word bowed, what were we reading? We were just reading Psalms, which was in the Old Testament. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. So, we're going to grab our Strong's and go into the into the word first. So the 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 way it works is alphabetical order. So we're gonna go to B and we're gonna go to that word bode. Okay, B O W Okay, so we have it here. So the way the strongs works, it gives you the word. But you have to have that actual passage so you could know you're looking up the proper word. So if we open up bowed, we see here, okay, we see here that you have the word and then you have every single passage that that word bowed is in, okay? So we're looking in Psalms. So you're gonna go and look for Psalms here in this row. So you're going to look for Psalms 18.9, and that is where you're going to look up that word, bowed. All right? So we're going to look up, let me see, Psalms 18.9, and that is H5186. H5186. So you get that. Now we're going to go look for that word. We're going to look for the definition of that word. So we're going to look at, let me see what did we say here. 5186. Okay, so we're going to go to the Hebrew. I always put tabs so they're easily navigated. Okay, so we're going to go to Hebrew 5186. And you're just going to go to the 5000s and look up 5186 and see what good old Strong's has to say. 5186. Okay, so that word, 5186, nata. Okay, which means to stretch or to spread out. If you have your strongs with you, you'll see that you will have that word there. And then you'll have everywhere that word and every definition, how many times that word appears, where it appears, and what will be the connotation of that word and the definition. Okay, so this is how we do our word study. So we have 5186 to stretch out. So we have, we're dealing with an entity that's able to stretch out the dimensions who made them. These dimensions we as human beings don't understand. But we have one that does understand. We have a king that also does understand and also lives in these dimensions. So this is how we start to understand. So now we have 5186, Natah. Let's go back into Job. Now we're going to make, this is how I make my connections. I find that word and I find another passage, how we just looked at in our Strong's. Where else is that word rely? Where else does that word reside? Okay, so you'll look again. Look at other passages. Where can I find that word again? And this is how I make my studies. This is how we see that all these things start to click and come together is because this is how I do these studies and this is how you should learn to do them. This is how you will understand them a lot better. Let's go into Job. Job. Good old Job, one of the founding fathers here, so to speak, of course. And let's see what Job has to tell us. So we're going to go to Job 9, right before Psalms. Yes, Job 9 5. Let's see what Job has to say. Okay, so Job 9 5. Let's see what he says. Which removes the mountains and they know not, which overturns them in his anger, which shakes the earth out of her place and the pillars 
there do tremble, which commands the sun and it rises not and seals up the stars. Let's go to verse eight, which alone, please circle alone, spreads out, underline spreads out, the heavens and treads upon the waves of the sea. Stop there. We just looked up the definition of bode. And what did we find? Stretches out. That same word, Nata 5186, is also in the passage, Job 5.9. Can you tell me which word that would be? Yes, you know. Spreads. Okay, spreads is the same word, 5186. So you can see how that one word has many sayings. So one in one passage is stated as bode. In other passages stated as spreads. Same thing. So we have an entity who does what he wishes, bows the heavens if he wants to, breaks them in half, moves mountains, tells the sun not to rise and it doesn't. This is where we need to put our thought pattern at because this is where we will be after our existence in this physical realm. This is something that a lot of us cannot do. It's very hard to do. But can you do it? Of course. It's called prayer. And we must all be in prayer as much as we can daily. Okay? For each other. Because you will be seeing this again, ladies and gentlemen. Just as easy it is for a video camera to record every single individual or even these sessions. How hard is it for a supreme being to record your daily life daily. Think about it. So we have those words, okay? We just went into the Strong's, see how we can navigate through those. So we have the words in two different passages, right? Good. So we're getting a, we're getting close to what what is the makeup of the Son of Man because we are within that body, correct? So we're going to check the anatomy. Let's go into Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's see what we have here. Ephesians chapter 1, and we'll go to verse 20. Let me see. Okay, and it states, Which he wrought in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand. In the heavenly places, please underline heavenly places. Far above all principality, power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head, please circle head, over all things to the church, which is his body, please circle body, the fullness of him that fulfills all. So we have Yeshua the Messiah as the head of the body. The head of the body. So we're going to, remember, head and toe analysis. He's the head on top of the body. Who is the body? The body is the church. The body is the bride. In the end, it will be the wife, the bride, the husband, the body, and he is the head. Okay? We're going to go into who the crown is. All right? So we that's good. So we have that. We have Yeshua the Messiah. Head of the body. Now, let's go into Revelation 1. Going to go to Revelation chapter 1. And let's see here. Okay, so we're going to go, we're going to, now we're going to start to break apart the body. Okay? Break apart the system. Break apart the kingdom. And see where every single part resides. So we have, let me see here, Revelation 1, 13. Let's go to it. Well, actually, we'll start at 12, and it states, And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Please underline candlesticks, because we're going to go through them. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the Son of Man. The Son of Man, we just talked about the Son of Man. Clothed with a white garment, down to the foot, and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. Let's go to 14. And his head and hairs were like wood. Were like wool. Please circle head. And white as snow. 
His eyes, please underline eyes, were as a flame of fire. Underline flame of fire. Now, I know that every time I tell you to circle and underline, one, indi one individual say, well, how come you always tell us to underline and circle, but you never come back to it? The reason I do that is because when I put those circles and underlines and you're flipping through your scriptures, it catches your eye. When it catches your eye, you go back to it. You look at the circle and now you can start doing your word study and go back to other passages that align with that underline or with that circle. That's the reason I do it. Sometimes we'll make the connections like we are going to today with the flame of fire. So we see we're going through the anatomy. We see the, the head of the son of man. Where does the head reside? We just looked at it in the last passage we just read. Heavenly places. So we have the head in heavenly places. Who follows the Messiah in the heavenly places? The angels. The angels, which are flames of fire. The eyes. Flames of fire. That is his team. Okay? That are the spiritual entities that follow him in the spiritual realms where the head resides. Are we starting to make this make sense? Okay, because we're going to go through it. We know that we are the body. Can spiritual entities also be in the body? 100% yes. Our Are our spirits of men walking in the spiritual realms? They are. So now you see that the body, the son of man, walks through all the dimensions that were made by him in our physical reality as well. So this is where we're going to start to understand how the body, the head, the feet, the paps, everything fits in the spiritual mentality that we're supposed to be thinking about. So we have Yeshua as the head of the body. We have the eyes, the eyes. Let's go into Hebrews 1.7. Hebrews 1.7 and then we'll come back. So Hebrews 1 7. So keep the eyes. And then we have the flame of fire. So we have the eyes, flames of fire. Okay, so this is where we're going to make the connection. Hebrew 1 7. And it states, and verse 7, and it states, and of the angels, he says, who makes his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Please underline flame of fire. That same terminology is in both Revelation and in Hebrew. It's the same thing. His spirits, flames of fire. Ministers, flames of fire. Same thing. So we're talking about the anatomy. We're talking about the eyes, which are not actual eyes. These are his ministers, flames of fire, which work with the head which resides in the heavenly realms. Okay? So now we're starting to get what the anatomy is looking like in the heavenly realms. When we first started our lesson today, we talked about heaven's opening and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Same thing. Okay? In the heavenly realms. The eyes. Now we're going to go through the rest of the body. Let's go into Revelation 19.12. Let's see, so we're going to go back. So now we're going to go back and forth into Revelation because this is going to be our focus for today's lesson. So Revelation 19, and let's see, I want to do this one. Yes, okay, Revelation 19, 12, and it states, His eyes, please circle eyes, were as a flame of fire. Please underline flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. Many crowns on his heads or on his head. So who are the many crowns? We know that our position as believers in the body is as kings and priests. We are the kings and or queens in the body which reside with Yeshua in the heavenly realms. Is this starting to make sense? Because this is how we meet. We must think in order to 
dictate what we will do in the spiritual realms. So, good. Many crowns. Let's go into Revelation 3.10. So we're in Revelation. Let's go back, back a little bit. Revelation 3 and verse 10. What do we have here? 3 and 10. And it states, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, or the time of temptation, which shall come upon the whole world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast what thou, that thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Please circle crown. No man take that crown. Who are the many crowns? This is how we're going to make the connections. Okay? We reside with Yeshua in the spiritual realms. We are the crowns within his kingdom. Does it start to make sense? Crowns on the head. The head resides in heavenly realms. Spirits of man reside with the king once belief has been attained this is what it is okay now do we start to make these jams and these clicks that connect and this is what study is all about all right so no man take thy crown in revelation 19 he had many crowns again same thing let's go into second chronicles second chronicles 16 9 Let's see. And we're going to start to make all these connections. Second Chronicles 16, 9. And it states, For the eyes, please circle eyes, of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Again, the eyes. These are not actual eyes. Okay, these are the same eyes that we just stated previously. The ministers, preachers, pastors, teachers, spiritual entities that also assist the body of Christ in the heavenly realms. Does it start to make sense? We are all together inside of this dynamic as the complete body of the Son of Man when the heavens open. Okay, so now we start to see exactly what Jacob saw, he saw into the spiritual realm that did not cease to exist and still exists and still operates under the head, our chief and king, Yeshua. Good? Good. So we have Second Chronicles. Go throughout the earth, all eyes, all spirits, including the spirits of men. A lot of individuals just say, oh, well, spirits of fire. Those are all angels. Where is your spirit? Are not men dictating the scriptures and gospels to other men? Of course they are. Do men have spirits? Of course they do. What are men's spirits? We're going to go into it in a few. Because we have spirits as well. If we, if we have our father who constructed the spirits of angels, did he not construct your spirit as well? We talked about it. Okay? But we're going to go into it again. Good. So we have the angels, we have ministers of fire. Let's go to Proverbs, Proverbs 15, three. Okay. I got so many scriptures here. I'm just gonna go through them all. But I know that you have a little bit of time to ingest all of this because you're gonna enjoy it. You're gonna enjoy it. All right, so good. Proverbs 15, three, let's go to it. Let's see what we have here. Okay, and it states, the eyes, again, circle, of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Wow, spiritual realms, beholding the evil and the good. Did we not just talk about the video camera? Spiritual video camera. Don't think that you could do things behind the guise that you will not be seen and or dictated and or noted. Because you will be. And you are. So am I. I'm nobody perfect at all. Far from it. However, what we do to combat that is what we will be judged on. Okay? So, this is what we must understand. That spiritual realms that's, that are currently activated were never deactivated. Think about it. 
So we have the eyes. We already know what the eyes are. That's located in the head. Okay? Part of the body of the Son of Man. Okay? Good. So let's go into... Let me see what we have here. Zechariah. Zechariah 4.10. Zechariah is going to be in the back of the Old Testament. And right before Malachi. Okay. Zechariah. Da, da, da. Let's see where we're going to start here. Okay. Zechariah 4.10. And it says, we'll start in the middle of that, of that verse. Where it states, with those seven, they are the eyes, please circle eyes, of the Lord, which run through and fro the whole earth. Then I answered and said to him, what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side? And I answered again and said, what be these two olive branches which are through the gold, gold, golden pipes and empty themselves and empty the golden oil out of themselves? He answered me and said, do you not know what these be? I said, no. Let's go to verse 14. And he stated, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Now, we're going to get into some of the talks about the two witnesses. Some believe that the two witnesses are two actual individuals. Which two actual individuals? No one knows. Some individuals believe that these are two assemblies, two churches that assist our king during his time on this earth before the second coming or the second revealing we also really do know that th it could be either one of those two or it could be those two together which one is it me myself i think that these are two assemblies you know we have another brother in christ um the aoc network had a expose or a film about the two witnesses. If you have the chance, please go ahead and check his side out. It's a very intuitive take on the two witnesses on who they might be. In that film, he stated something that was very predominant. He stated that the two witnesses can possibly be the two repentant churches in, Rev in the book of Revelation. We know that there are seven churches that go through and are tried. But only two of those churches, and this is going to be your homework when you're done with this video today, is to figure out who are the two repentant churches out of the seven in Revelation. Those two repentant churches are the ones that are given power. In Revelation 11, we have two anointed ones that are given power. The same two anointed ones that are alluded to in Zechariah 4. Golden oil. Those that have been blessed with the spirit. The spirit of prophecy. Those the ones that are part of the body. Is it starting to make sense? Because this is the anatomy of the kingdom. His, the king. The kingdom. In preparation for the father and eternity. Okay. Through the bride. Which I believe are the anointed ones. The two repentant churches. Now, this is something, of, of course, is up for speculation. I know. Okay? So we can talk about it. Um, a lot of individuals believe that this is the 144,000. Can it be? It's possible. Can it be all these things? Very possible. Why can't it be? This is something that we must ask ourselves. Okay? So, very good. Two anointed ones. This has always been a... A... Um, speculative chapter okay because still to this day we have individuals asking the same questions so we have those we have those individuals let's see who they are let's go into isaiah 61 okay let's go back a few chapters to isaiah 61 and 6 61 and 6 what, what do we have here And it states, but be ye named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. 
and you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles in their glory and boast yourselves. Who are the ministers? We talked about who the ministers, the flames of fire were. Who are the ministers? Who are the priests? This is how we're going to make the connections on what's going on in the body. So let's go back. So we have the angels flame of fire that we talked about in Hebrews 1 7 flame of fire fire P U R so I'll let you look it up in your strongs we just I just helped you with the first one so you know I'm gonna make you do the work for the second okay G 4442 you look that one up G 4442 okay fire the same fire that burns in candles who are the candles we're gonna go into it the fire that burns in the candles so let's go. So now we're, we're getting the dynamics, okay? Who is the head of the dark realms? Because we know that we have kingdom versus kingdom, correct? So we have the Messiah, Yeshua, the king and the head. Who is the king and the head of the false kingdom, the dark kingdom, the principalities, the powers of the dark realms? Let's look it up. Revelation 13, 2. Revelation 13, 2. And I think we all know this one by now. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. His feet were as a feet of a bear. Mouth as a mouth of a lion. We didn't state who the head was yet, but we're going to right now. And the dragon gave the power, his seat, and great authority. Who's the head? We know that a dragon is the head. The dragon is the head of the beast, the beast system. Who is part of the beast system? We just dictated who the body was. Many parts, okay? It could be the snake oil peddlers. It could be the spiritual realms. It could be those that follow him in the spiritual realms, as we stated the king does in the spiritual realms. This is a spiritual battle, ladies and gentlemen. Kingdom family. Kingdom of light versus kingdom of dark. And this is all where it comes to a head. This is the reason why we're told to grab our armor, spiritual armor, and fight the battle. The battle will still ensue with whether you like it or not. Whether you want to be a participant or not. Because uh, either way, you are in it. Okay? And it's real. So we have... Physical spiritual entities on one side, physical spiritual entities on the other. Okay, so this is how we're going to dictate exactly what's going on. Very good. So we have that one fire. Always keep that in your head because we're going to go through it. Where does the fire reside? Where does the fire of your spirit reside? Who made that fire? This is all real. So we have who the head was. Okay, I just wanted to make a connection on the heads versus the head. So let's go into the body. Okay? Revelation, let's go back into Revelation 113. We're going to do some heavy revelation work today, so bear with me. 113. Okay, so we were talking about the golden candlesticks, remember? One unto like the Son of Man clothed with a garment. Now, remember, the Son of Man, when we talked about it in John 151. Ascending, descending on the Son of Man. The Son of Man having a garment. Top to the bottom. Who is in the body? What does white symbolize? Remember we're talking about the symbolization in Revelation. Pureness. Repentance. We talked about the repentance in Revelation 11. Okay? About the two churches. Two anointed ones. Two candlesticks. We just looked right here and we've seen that there are seven candlesticks seven assemblies who are the seven assemblies if we go into uh, chapter one into the end it states let's go to 20 real quick and it states the mystery of the seven stars which i saw in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks and we're gonna get the clues the seven stars are the angels messengers of the seven churches okay so we have messengers in the heavenly realms that dictate to the churches which is the assembly which is the body okay i hope this is making all sense right now 
Let's continue. And the seven candlesticks you saw were the seven churches. The candlesticks that he saw are the seven churches. The son of man walks through the spiritual dimensions that he's able to bow at his will, come in and out as he, uh, as he sees fit. So this is where it starts to all make sense. His body, which is manifestation in the spiritual and physical realms. They have spiritual entities and physical entities. This is where it all comes together. And this is how we're gonna continue to make these, these um, connections. 113, so Revelation, stay in Revelation, we're gonna go to 19. So go over to 19. And we're gonna go 19.7. All right, let's see what we have here, 19.7. And it states, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. Let's go down to eight. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Please underline fine linen, righteousness of saints. So we have the marriage. We have the wife who's supposed to be part of the husband, the white, the, the wife being white and clean, which is what? Righteousness of saints. Repentance, repented saints. Okay. Again, going back to the anointed ones. Are these the two repentant churches that we have the homework to find after this lesson? Think about that, okay? Because this is how you're gonna make these connections. White and clean. So we're talking about a marriage of a man, a bride, getting ready for the kingdom in eternity. Let's make sense of this. Let's go into Ephesians 5.30. Real quick, Ephesians. Okay, let me see, let me see, let me see. Ephesians 5.30. Let's see what we have here. And it states, we are the members of his body. Please, circle body. And of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his mother and father and shall be joined unto his wife. And they shall too be one flesh. Let's go to verse 32. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Yeshua and the church. You are part, are, are part of his body. You are part of his complete anatomy. Stemming with the body. Okay. Together with the wife. The wife being clean, repentant, fine linen, con connected with the husband. We just, we just see what Paul just told us. He's talking about Christ and the church. This is the connection he's making. Okay? So, perfect. So we have the anatomy, which includes the bride, wife of the husband. Are we, are we starting to see where the anatomy is going? So we have the body. Okay? Now we're going to go to, let's go into 1 Corinthians 12. Let's see what 1 Corinthians 12 has to tell us. I know it's a lot of scripture and I know you love it too. So I'm going to give you exactly what we all love. Plenty of scripture. All right. Let's see. First Corinthians 12. Now, first Corinthians 12 is, I'm going to let you read that on your own because it's, it's a lengthy tap chapter, but this tells of, tells us of our spiritual gifts. Some of us, um, I've gotten comments that stated that they don't know what their spiritual gift is, is yet. My answer always is the same to them. Keep searching, keep praying, and keep reading because the Father will talk to you through His Spirit in His Word. How else can you possibly talk to Him if you're not, if you're not giving yourself into prayer, prayer time, time alone with Him? This is what He asked for, okay? So do that. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and it'll tell you of the many members of this body. Okay, this is going to go through from our anatomy. Okay, we have the body, but we also have fingers, toes. Okay, we have everything that, that comes together as one. 
So your job again tonight, or whenever you have the time, go into 1 Corinthians 12, and I'll tell you about the many members of this body. Perfect. So now we're going to go into, we did the body, now the feet. What does the feet have to do with the body? We know that our scriptures tell us that the Father will place all enemies under the feet of Yeshua. Where do his feet reside? Where does judgment reside? In the heavenly realms. The judgment resides under his feet in the underworld, okay? Where judgment takes place under his feet. So let's finish off. Let's try first, we'll stay in first Corinthians. All right, we have in first Corinthians, we'll go into 15. 1525 and let's see what we have actually we saw with 24 then comes the end when he shall have delivered the kingdom to God even the father when he shall have put down all rule and authority and power when is this this has to be now for first he must reign please underline first Till he has put all enemies under his feet. Please circle feet. Okay, so now we're going to start going enemies under his feet. Where does where does this possible? What can this possibly be? In the underworld. Okay, this remember the dynamic of the complete body. Where would his feet be? What would be under his feet? And why? Let's check Psalms. Psalms one. Let me see. Psalms 110. Go into Psalms real quick. Psalms 110. And we'll uh, start with the first chapter. Or first um, verse. Let's see here. Psalms 110. And it states, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Let's think about that. Make thy enemies thy footstool. So if you're sitting up on your couch, your feet crossed on the couch, and then you have a footstool. So we already know what's indicative of the feet or what's under his feet is judgment. Make your enemies your footstool is the underground, under realms, darkness, judgment, under his feet. Don't let that be you. Okay? In this spiritual realm we're supposed to be part of his body we do not want to be under his feet think about that so we're, go we're going top to bottom head body feet members first corinthians 12 members of the body go into that when you have a chance now we're going to go into the assemblies who is part of the assemblies Again, if we go back to Revelation 1.13, we're talking about the candlesticks. Zechariah 4.14, we talked about the two anointed ones. We went into that already. Revelation 11.4, open your scriptures. Revelation 11.4, bear with me. We're going to get through this together. Okay? Let's see, Revelation 11. And four. Well, actually, we'll start at three. And it states, And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score days clothed in sackcloth, clothed under suppression. Now, I picked that particular chapter from when I started this lesson today. The two anointed ones that preach under suppression, under the knowledge that what they're saying is real and true, spirit of prophecy, power given to the individuals who accept it. This is something that we must all be thinking about. Who is included in those individuals given power? This is something that we must always be thinking about. So we have those individuals, two candlesticks, two assemblies, candlesticks, assemblies, Ecclesiastes. Another one. You're going to be looking up another one in your strongs. G1577. 
Okay, G1577. Let's go into we'll stay in Revelation. Let me see here what we have in Revelations 120. Okay, and we went over that already, talking about the seven candlesticks, which are the seven churches, seven assemblies. G1577, assemblies, churches, gatherings. Look up that word. It'll tell you that these are the people who gather together. We talked about this earlier in this in this lesson. All right, so this is where this is all going to start making sense. Let's go into Proverbs. Before we go into Proverbs, think about those candlesticks. Who are the candlesticks? What are they comprised of? If we go into Proverbs 2027, we're going to find out. Proverbs 2027. Okay, let me see here. And then I will let you all be on your merry way. So we're going <laughs> to... Proverbs 20 and 27. Let's see what uh, candlesticks means. Okay, 20 and 27, and it states, The spirit of man is the candlestick of the Lord. Please underline candle of the Lord. Searching the inward parts of the belly. There you have it. The candlesticks. The candlesticks of the Lord. The conglomeration of assemblies. Every single individual owning their own candlestick owning their own vessel which is part of a bigger vessel being the body okay so we know that where we see that the son of man goes through these candlesticks goes through our souls we just read it right here he goes through the inner parts and sees exactly who the individuals are the real parts about them the candlesticks if we go into our scriptures into Matthew I know I know that you know where I'm gonna go next candlesticks let's think about it Matthew let's think about it candlesticks yes you know Matthew 25 so let's go to it Matthew 25 and again Every single one of these chapters, go into them in, in, in its entirety and read through the whole thing so you could get the gist. We're running out of, a little bit running out of time, but it's okay. We're going to stretch it through. Let's we'll start from the beginning. Matthew 25, and it states, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be unto like ten virgins, which took their lamps, underline lamps, lamps are candlesticks, and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, five of them were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, the fire of the Holy Spirit. But the wise took oil in their vessel with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. At midnight there was a cry made, Bridegroom comes, go out to meet him. Then all those, please, then all those virgins, please circle all, because every single believer comes around at one time. The foolish said, give us your oil, for our lamps have gone out. Give us your oil. They wanted to be just as anointed as another individual without doing the work. Give us some of your oil, but our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered and said, no, but there will not be enough for us and you. But go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. You go to the source. We just talked about going face to face with the Father. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with his oil that he puts in your lamp in order to be lit by his Holy Spirit. Have that fire blazing. Okay? The fire. Remember, we talked about the fire. The fire, the ministers, the preachers, the pastors, every single individual that is out there edifying the church, the church, the bride, part of the body, the bones. Always think about this. The anatomy of the king and his kingdom. So what happens in the end? We know that we are the lit fires. As it states in our scriptures, does someone light a fire and put it under a bed? No, he puts it out there for the world to see. We're supposed to be burning bright for the kingdom. Okay, and this is where I hope to take you. 
This is where I hope to be with you. Okay, so we have that one. Let's go real quick into Revelation 18 and then we'll end our lesson for the day. So you're going to have a whole lot of studying to do. All right, so Revelation 18... 1823 okay and it states and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee we know that the light of the candle is right now we know that the bridegroom is right now we know that the bride is is right now in the end they will all be gone there will be no more light of a candle there will be no more bridegroom crying in the wilderness begging those to prepare themselves for the kingdom it will be all over ladies and gentlemen and hopefully these lessons and hopefully the individuals that talk to you pertaining to the kingdom do this just that and do their due diligence for that Okay, so now we see kind of what the two witnesses are set on this earth to do as candles, as ministers for the Lord, taking the oil with the fire, being held by the King, Yeshua, the Messiah. Okay, so again, I wanted to thank every single one of you once again. I want to send my love and my blessings out to every single one of you for contacting and um, and and give and giving me sustenance as well. I'm not the only one who's doing Bible study. I also take um, bits and pieces from other individuals. And again, you have to take the stuff in. You have to study it for yourself. You know, chew the meat, spit out the bones. So they so they say. All right. So take that, and hopefully, you know, we could we could all come in union once again in the kingdom in eternity with the Father, the Son, through His Spirit. Okay. So again, I want to thank every single one of you. I'm praying for all of you. All of you, all of your prayer requests are being attained to. So I'd like to thank all of you. I'll see you again on the next lesson. Bless.